Yeah, they hiding. They will hide their last pick or uh, their mid for last pick. Why would you pick Winter Weaver in that right now? Is it a counter to Visage in a sense? Because it's a so. really bad hero to have versus Lash Rack. Like, really, it really is. It sets up so well for the Lash Rack. But maybe they just expect the same out of the uh, C deck again with the Lash. And if it's a support, you don't really care because he can't run in the same way a mid Lash does. Yeah, I always, I always think it is a, sorry, a Lash Rack core, so same. Lash Rack support is very different, I guess. Not the same burst damage. It does counter the birds really hard, though. The cold embrace is very nice. You can just protect yourself. And it's a nice way to try and keep the clockwork alive after he initiates, actually. I mean, they still have a lot of team fight with the Violin plus CM plus Gyro, so... Oh. There's still a lot of synergy with, within their own lineup. I don't even think they had to ban the PL, to be honest. Looking at EG's lineup, they have a great lineup to deal with PL. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> co-op yet again. What is going on? <laughs> I, I, now I kind of hope that it's not a core Lash Rack, because core Lash Rack and Queen together really don't match. Yeah, well. we saw that from BP and we felt that it didn't work very well together. Yeah, if you don't win super early, I think the only way you can play Queen of Pain and Lash Rack core together, you have to build Necro Book and push, like Necro Queen. But else it just doesn't work. I mean, unless you go completely, I'd say YOLO, you just keep on diving and keep on, like if you're so much ahead, then I could see Co-op and Lash Track, you know, being able to actually carry you and end the game. But uh, it's indeed not the best core duo to have because, as, as we said earlier, those heroes, they do the same pretty much. Yeah, that is indeed very true. I mean, the first rotation has to be very successful. They're going to do the same thing. Queen, if they do Queen safe lane, they're going to move the Queen into a smoke once she hits six. The Sarge will take the lane and, and they have to work much better this time, the timing of the gank. They could try and contest as well. Queen Tusk lane is not super weak if they want to, but I think they should utilize the Visage and Tusk together. Wind Ranger at your service. Oh, there we go. It's a male Ranger. That is dangerous for a Queen. If he gets Blink Dagger on Windrunner, he can definitely kill the Queen off. They also use it solo versus Lesh. Uh, I think it was Vichy's Lesh. So, I mean, now they even have the strength of the Crystal Maven. So I actually think it's, you know, 45 55 in Wind Ranger, uh, Wind Ranger's favor, maybe. Oh, uh, against the Leshrak? Against either of them. Oh, yeah, I think Wind Ranger actually wins against Queen. Five seconds remaining. But yeah, the lane, the game that I'm thinking about where we saw is Mail's Windrunner against the Storm, that's just the perfect matchup, of course. Oh, God. They did not do the see that. The spiders are here. That's the matchup. Hey, thank you very much, gents. Let's go down to the commentary team for game number two. Yes, let's get underway for game number two of our TI5 Grand Final, where C Deck Gaming is going up against Evil Genius. So C Deck, they looked unstoppable coming into this Grand Final, but currently one game down against Evil Genius's Cinderin Brood Last Pickup. This, something, something new. This is a very good Brood <laughs> pick. Uh, I think it's funny because LD just tweeted out a moment ago, no brute ban. I was like, yeah, that's actually true. This has generally been banned in the second phase a lot, and then they snap it. They they grab it here. I think this is a really good last pick. It's this is not the kind of game plan that EG. This is not what they were planning for, right? They get the picks they they want, and this can just completely ruin their laning stage. They don't have a very good support duo against the brute mother. I do think, however, this is the first time we see CDC play it in this tournament. Maybe they've played it like once or twice before, but not at the, I don't recall seeing a single one at the main event, at least. Um, so definitely bringing something new to the table once again. And this time it's going to be Shiki's Lash Rack in the mid lane, so it is not a support Lash. I got to say, this time around, I, I do feel like CDC have got a much more solid draft against what EG grabbed than in game one. Yeah, it, it really does look a lot better, but it, it's something outside of the box for C-Deck. It's, it's not this we group up as five kind of thing anymore. Uh, even though there is still a little bit of potential for that, we need to watch the presence of this 4-1 split, which comes with the, the effect of picking up a Broodmother. C-Deck will need to get this down pat. So XZ will be the Broodmother for this offlane. Looks like he's going to have himself a... Uh, most of EG moving up there later on because it will be Fierce Lane. Universe already blocked out the pull point with both Observer and Sentry for the Radiant side, while 
I should put down a little bit more of a, uh, I don't know if we can actually class this as a, as a defensive ward, more of a, just a, a rune ward watching the jungle movements of Evil Genius's Observer Ward for C-Deck. And they will ensure they get top rune, so there will be no battle. Both teams are looking to op at opposite runes. Yeah, I think this is just going to be secured top lane and, and Shiki's going to get over top river. EG, both teams actually have really good level one fight, but they just decide to play it safe and just do a trade off here. No, they're giving it to XZ. To the Broodmother. Very are they switching this up? Okay, so we're running Whoa. an off lane Quab, a mid lane Brood, and a safe lane Lesh. Okay, they're taking, they're not only surprising EG with the pick, they're also surprising them with the laning. This is definitely not what they were expecting. But there's already a sentry ward here for PPD, so Samel has to go up against the Broodmother. And where are the counter sentries? There's one on the Brood. We have to watch this closely to see who's able to tango down the ward before it actually happens. Because Samel's going to keep high ground vision with this observer ward here, but he needs to have the true sight. PPD is just preparing. Well, he's just preparing his own farm right now. But Samal's getting a real rough time. Xe's getting up in his face and just chipping away at him. And he has a poor man's shield starter, so the exchange is going to favor him every single time they hit each other. He's going to start making his first spider lane here. But Ichi also switched up their lane. So it's a Queen of Pain versus a Clockwork. There's very little a Clockwork can do about this, uh, unless he can force the Queen of Pain to get caught out of position with no blink. But in trade-off, EG now run, and I don't want to say an aggressive dual, dual lane, but there's still a lot of aggression that can come from it, with both Fear and Aoi, with this Jaro and Wyvern combining together for this offlane. They're not going to win this lane either, if CDC play it right. This, this three on two favors them, not by just a little bit, but actually by a lot. They can just initiate with the Tusk, with a follow-up stun from Lesh, when Lesh is level two, and then the Soul Assumption. Gyrocopter is not tanky in the start. He has seven armor right now, but he does not have much health. And just this extreme magic damage burst that this lane can provide. Fear will just... He's done. He's going away. Like, he doesn't want to play this lane. He's going to go top instead. This is also not a good matchup, though. He's a level 1 Gyro against a level 3 Queen of Pain. I, I don't think this could have gone any better for CDC in the first two minutes with the lanes they've got. Apart from the fact that Sumail is apparently destroying XC in mid, but we're used to seeing Sumail just doing extremely well in the first few minutes in the, in the mid matchup. It's the Broodmother trying to find last hits and just being incapable of doing so, but also Samel with a level 2 power shot, able to burn through a couple of spirelings. So the CS looks a little bit lopsided where it's 14-3 against 7-2, and that's because half of that is actually spirelings for Samel. So it's not as much money as you'd expect, but it's still keeping him in front of the Broodmother. Okay, so they have picked it three times at this event. They or two and one with it at DAC, or is that DAC, <laughs> at TI, yeah, that's right. Living in the now, Sint. Yeah, let's, uh, let's focus on this event. Uh, Did EG? these guys actually even play at DAC? I can't remember if CDC were present in that tournament. I don't know. Got to be careful, the Cogs, he's actually locked in here. The Shards blocked his path out, and Universe will be the first blood going the way of C-Deck. There's, okay, so here's the problem for EG. They cannot put a lane bottom. There's no one in their lineup who can face up against this tri lane. They but have there's absolutely no, one who no could, solution. There's no one who could move into the jungle. Like, you can't just have like someone like a Storm Spirit or a Dark Seer move into the jungle and take that farm instead. It's a very difficult situation for them. That they'll, they'll have to find a solution for it. For now, they've just been jungling the CM of PPD. And they might be looking to maybe rotate on this mid lane, although, as similar to last game, Samael should have a pretty good idea that he is winning the lane right now. Mm -hmm. But he's still being pressured while winning on farm, and AUI is going to come in. Oh, now the snowball. This could be opening right now, especially with the shards locking Samael in underneath the tower. Still a lot of damage being taken here by the Visage, and they're looking for a revenge pickoff. And with the shards, Wyvern will take it. It is going to be Aoi. It's a lot of damage onto that Broodmother as well. He might consider dropping that sentry ward yeah, and getting rid of it. He knows there's the sentry now. He got hit by two tower shots under his web. Uh, Samael placed it just a moment ago as well, so... If he places that right now and eats the ops and this, uh, Well, oh, he only has one tango. <laughs> so he has to pick which one he eats and then he can just attack the other one. That would be... Give him a better grip on the mid lane. Now with Samael dead... XZ is level five and a half, same as Samel. So now this lane is pretty much dead even on gold. Snowball top lane, Fear's in trouble. And this is this this is the rotation we're expecting from C Deck during game number one. And what we've seen from them this entire tournament.
The lanes, yes, they've gone horribly wrong for EG, but C deck, their movement, they don't leave any lane unpressured. EG have to start getting somewhat active, or at least they need to get out their amazing counter ganks that they had in game number one. But it's way less predictable in this game how the movements are going to be because of the pressure CDC are putting on the lanes in general. Last game they didn't have the strongest laning phase, but this time around they're the ones kind of deciding the tempo of the game. This could be an interesting play for EG if they could manage to get the setup in the bottom lane. Shiki is pretty far up the lane. They can move in the clockwork with Battery Assault, and of course AUI can fly over here with the Arctic Burn. They're thinking about it, but they don't feel like they have enough information to really go for this kill right now. They don't, they don't know who else is behind it. They know they've at least blocked up the camp, but that doesn't mean anything. They're not seeing any other heroes. In fact, Tuscar is the man just sitting in middle lane wondering what's going on. And if Universe aggressively moves down the lane, Shiki will just back up. He's got Arcane Boots, he's quite happy just to bail out. And in fact, yeah, now he's going to realize this is not going to work. Throws out an Observer Ward, but this might have actually... It didn't get pinged out by C-Deck, but they have an Observer Ward of their own watching the movements of the Wyvern. Another reason why Shiki's being a little bit more on his toes. Shards and Snowball going on some Albies well behind the tower, and Guard is throwing up the Sigil to ensure his safety as he retreats back from the Tier 1. Uh, if, they don't, if they don't get him locked in with the shards, that's, this kill is just not happening. Unless they have a third hero in the gank. But it's gonna fail. And EG are, are, once again, they're looking good in the mid lane as far as farm goes. But this time around, Fear is not having a free lane. He has been ganked. He is also tied on farm with the Lashrak, whereas in the last game, I, I feel like he was having a little bit of a... No, he, was he even having an early lead on CS? I think in the beginning, Aggressive might have had the same, but... Uh, aggressive aggressive was ahead over. of him. He yeah. had a lot more denies as well. But Fear very quickly caught up. I don't think that's going to be the case in this game. I think Shiki is going to be able to stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with him at the very least. Also, the Corlish Rack farms very quickly when he gets a couple items. So, There's How long has AUI been here? Uh, the last two to three minutes. And now PPD being slowed up. PPD turns for just one Frost Nova. He can't do anything about it, EG. Uh, lose one, the rocket damage actually quite heavy until a track, but meanwhile, you're snowballing after Samel, he's wind running up, and now the call down from V with a rocket barrage, and Black Cannon, they get the shackle on Garda, he can't ensure the last hit of damage. To try and bring down Samel, and the extra support, the sonic wave comes in from Aggressive. Perfect time to move in, so it'll be a one-for-one -one trade off. I love the fact for EG that Fear is getting involved here, and, and goes for the counter gank mid, they have to... They have to kind of bait CDC into these positions where the call down can turn on them, and they get one kill here only, unfortunately, for them as... Was that what happened to the bottle? Is that okay? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. Apart so, from Samal's life, that's not as fine. Yeah, he's not looking too good right now, but... CDC once again with a better trade, and AUI wasted so much time in that bottom lane. He was hanging around, hoping for the gank, and the moment they finally rotate over PPD, he just gets killed. Nice shackle in the mid lane. They need more control on him. They do have the sentry ward down still. So watching where the Broodmother's going, and a hook shot in from Universe, combining with the power shot from the Wind Ranger. Before this was going to happen, I was going like, hey, man, Broodmother, great, get, great lane in the mid, able to come back nicely, scouted out the stacks of the dire jungle, so wanted to move it and try and take these out to keep a net worth up high. But now with this kill, the Broodmother really starting to lose her grip on the mid lane. And maybe we also start to look at, at the uh, sidelines now. Rotations from C-Deck. Uh, Queen of Pain of Aggressive is... Gonna find AUI here. I don't think he can kill him because he doesn't have Sonic. And as a matter of fact, there could be a line for a Shackle here. So Mabel doesn't have the vision just then. He landed and aggressive will just blink into the lane and, and farm up a bit. So dodging a bullet there. Okay, taking another one. <laughs> He's still gonna survive. Very difficult to escape the splinters. CDC have a smoke on guard. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yes. Whenever they pick up smoke, so I think these this is the team that holds onto their smokes for the shortest time. Like the, it feels like they buy it and they go. They just have a plan. They they want to keep the aggression up, get the ganks in. They now know Sumel is in the bottom lane, so they could have a really good opening here on Universe in mid. And if they do manage to catch him out, they should be able to claim the tower for Brood as well, which is a huge impact on the game. It's going to allow him oh, to. Oh, he is already open here. They're going to go on Universe, but the cooldown's going to come in. Universe with a rock of barrage, he's going to stay alive here. So Paul was about even hook shutting himself back over to AUI to ensure everything is safe. And Ichi brought their entire team as well. And Cedex saw this since they backed up. That Observer Ward in between the tower is seeing everything. Gyro is such an incredible counter ganker when you're in the right place at the right time. When you don't have to TP in and then drop your call down, which takes way too long, but you can just drop it from the fog. 
CDC, I think, making the right call there, just getting out instead of trying to dive for the kill and maybe losing two or even three heroes. So, Fear with another heads up play. But as a result, he's actually he's still farming pretty well. I'm, he's being very, very effective in his movement. It's not like he's just hanging out in the mid lane, waiting there for two minutes for a gank to happen, similar to what the Wyvern did bot. Mm -hmm. He is just reading CDC very now well. He's and now he's going to have to read them extremely. Okay, he is very dead here. There's, there's Rocket Barrage damage. He's still going to live in one charge, but it's not going to be enough. Immediate caster's curse. He's reading them very well, gets ganked. <laughs> <laughs> well, CDC also reading the game nicely. They understand. Yeah. And his gyrocopter, just how much, how many issues they'll create for C deck. While well, there's T1 Talos, so Mel's gonna try and keep it alive. You can only go for the denial, in fact, is able to claim it. And then power shots down all the spiderlings too. So much extra money while on top lane, Visage caught out by Universe. And they're able to find that kill with the help of PPD. Universe not having even expended his hook shot to do this kill. And PvD's gonna find another one. Lothraic's coming in, and it's Clockwork wants to try and help him out. The hook shot down into the cogs. Where's your battery of solace? There as well. And they got extra health coming in from Samael. They're looking for the damage with the power shot. They want oh. him dead, and they've got him dead. He was so close to landing a lightning storm on PPD, but he finds the fog just in the last second there on the Crystal Maiden. And Shiki, of course, missing the first stun. He did have a chance, but did get dodged by PPD in that situation. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the supports on both teams, because it's very important with these level 6s, it's actually aggressive. Yeah, he's going after Aoi, but with that cold embrace, Aoi, yeah, he's not going to survive. The attack damage from the tower is not going to be enough either. The clockwork rocket was flying down from Universe. He might have been expecting his Wyvern to survive a little bit longer, but yeah, uh, about the supports. Yeah, so... Both uh, the, the supports on, on both teams are actually finding decent levels. PPD is level seven and a half, minute eleven, which is very high for a CM. Wyvern five and a half, Visage almost six, and Tusk five and a half. When C I think it favors CDC a bit more when their heroes get level six. The the Tusk and the Visage are extremely potent for ganks. It gives them a lot more information as well with the familiars together with broodlings they can really start taking control of the map and look for the ganks similar to what uh, eg did in the last game with their clockwork and storm they will be doing it by finding the information with just their summons and then oh. taking it from there as oh that was really close here that was just an universe. inch off both in length and direction and at the, at the same time for eg the the winter's curse from wyvern when you snowball in two heroes the immediate counterplay from Wyvern can really destroy your combination. And they have, they have to give Wyvern level 6 now. It looks like they will as well. AUI will take two waves. Uh, Samael, locked to the trees, trying to cut through it with a power shot. Mikata, they're going to body block him up right now. That's it, just making life difficult. Not to mention the rest of c -Deck coming in with the stuns. They'll find themselves the pick. At the same time, EG, they're searching for this Broodmother. The Spirelings, they're chasing down PPD. The Battery Assault from Universe trying to keep him back. And now she cold embrace into the splinter. That's some really good farm for Aoi. And the Ice Shard's positioning for that gank on Samael was just at oh, oh, fear almost getting the... The, the homing message. missile, I, actually... It's level one. It's okay, gone. yeah, that's not enough damage. And it also probably won't get back past the towers. Oh, what was I? The Ice Shard's that Tusk got off down here, this is like the Cliff of Doom for EG. <laughs> that one right there. That's where they lost their game one to CDC as well against Tusk. He cut them off with Ice Shard's and split, split the fight in two. And they actually got a really good fight that looked like uh, EG could have gained even more momentum. It was the first of many fights that CDC managed to grab in that game. And Ice Shards are so good on choke spots like that. You really just... They, they lock you down for so long. It's like Fissure, but in a way more controllable as far as angle goes. Oh, they see him. They see the Broodmother cursing directly away and the Spidelings turn on their mother as the Clockwork jumps in, but there's so many Spiders in The Battery is also doing the work up against the Broodmother. The hunger is just insatiable from XZ. The universe being cold and braced up. Broodmother still running away, but they've lost the vision now. And in comes Shiki with the lightning bouncing around. Universe as well as AUI, but with a shackle. The Lothrak is controlled. There's nowhere near enough damage to find any kind of revert or revenge kill on EG. It's fear with a sonic wave. A little bit of trouble. The familiar stuns as well as the spines. They find the kill, but PPD letting it go right now until the snowball comes in from CDEC. They need more. Universe is on the run. The Cogs going to push back the rest of CDEC, buying space for Samael until Aggressive comes in with a scream. The familiars do the work in queue. We'll find a pickup on Universe. A three for one trade off. And it looked like Shiki was getting over aggressive there. Great shackle from Samael, but the backup from CDC, once again, they're so quick. 
at gathering up. It's something the the panel has talked about a lot as far as their playstyle goes. This is probably the fastest team at rotating and at backing each other up. And in this case, you can't really say they outnumbered EG, but the key point about this fight is that the call-down missed. It's been the winning point in every single skirmish EG has had. This time around, Fear doesn't land it. And with that on cooldown, they're able to chase them down with the Grave Chill, as well as the spiders in the web. Let's start to talk about like our late game. How does C-Deck end this game against Evil Geniuses? You're running a Brood, you're running a Lesh. So how do you actually take out EG and still ensure you can take the ranks without losing your entire team? Is this when you look towards Broodmother with Necro units? Because he went for a Vlads to start with. What's, what's the build? You could look to split push. You could also just look to control the map. Like the, the ultimate goal, oh, call there's down. a call down. Yeah, PPD got the vision with the Sentry Ward, but now Broodmother just runs away from fear. He even triggered fast. drum charges for this, but couldn't find it. I think CDC, the, the main point they, or the main thing they need to accomplish is to get more towers right now. Uh, looking at the base push is, of course, something they're going to have to do eventually. But if they manage to get far enough ahead on towers and have Root just control the entire jungle, they could be really flexible in what items they need to buy. Universe, them. nice hook shot down. He's going to trigger off the dust. They see the Broodmother perfectly in PPD. There we go again. All over the Broodmother, and he will go down this time. And as real Crystal Maidens do, you wait the full 10 seconds. He's like, I keep getting money in on my bank account because he runs Broodlings into me. Okay, I, I mean, that's cool. I'll just give me a little bit of more gold. That's a rich CM then. I think the Broodmother was like, okay, why is he still channeling his ultimate? He's got to stop now. Okay, he's got to stop now. Shackle bottom lane. Samal catching out Garda. Out AUI is here as well. Going to curse him up. And that means Tuska can go nowhere. Aggressive try to come in, but he doesn't really have mana ready to fight. Staring down some mail. The lightning will start it off, and that's where he can do a little bit more work. It's coming in from the strike, looking for any kind of block. In fact, to Mal turns onto the shackle. You'll have the splinter coming in from AUI. Making it a little bit more nerve-wracking if Lashrak was going to force the issue. But without the sonic wave from the Queen of Pain, there wasn't enough damage to counter the gank from EG. They've got a couple of good kills in the last few minutes, EG. And this has to happen for them, because else the map is going to fall apart. If they can keep on finding the picks, it disallows CDC from grouping up as four and having Brood split pushing, or even as, it, as they have done so far. They are really fighting with their Brood. It's often the Brood initiating the ganks with the Spiderlings, forcing out Cold Embrace, uh, getting into a position where she can attack with Insatiable Hunger, and then, of course, there's been a couple of counterplays from EG, but overall, XZ has actually had really good success in this game with an alternative playstyle for this Brood that we see very rarely these days. Instead, that's where we were looking for at the, at the very, very start of the drops. Like this, this four and one, which is just so uncharacteristic of C deck. Now a whole bunch of spiderlings actually chasing in the universe. They don't actually find him until the creep wave connects. But you, you're right. It's this, it's this different style of brood, almost going back to. I, I don't want to. I'm going to quote it anyway. The uh, the zero four four built. When you get the when you get the insatiable bite up. And then you just start fighting. You just try and find kills and run yourself in. In this case, it's a lot more of a balanced kind of build where he's controlling so many different areas of the jungle, making it e hard for EG to stack and just flash farm. Everything's being watched. I'm also liking how EG's getting a little bit more inventive with their sentry wards, putting them deeper inside the tree line. A lot more difficult to counter ward for C-Deck, even if they do have sentries down. And it just goes to show how much the Brood is doing. They're... They're really worried about the amount of control CDC are getting on the map. And yes, they're gathered up top and they're not getting killed right now and they're putting down these sentries. But at the same time, Aggressive is just split pushing the bottom lane, finding his Orchid. And this bottom tier one tower is probably not long for life. I don't think EG will be in a position to hold this. So the Brood, even though she is unsuccessful in finding the towers herself, space created. Yeah. EG's already prepared to try and force in the top lane. So it's going to be the tier one tower there. Which took up a little bit of damage. Well, Shrike's already going to defend the mid lane, which is where another place where EG decide to push. And see, the, the choice is there. Do you want to try and fight? You're going to shard up to start with. Fear will dodge it. The catapult's still alive, so there's still some decent damage coming into this tower. At the same time, a gank is also being prepared on bottom lane. That one's looking for aggressive. It'll be successful with the TP out, however. Oh, he canceled it. Yeah, he did. Wait, if they see him, the rocket flare, they're going to see him. The blink down universe. Oh, he almost target. ran into it. <laughs> I wonder why Aggressive cancelled. So I think what they wanted to happen there is Aggressive had to wait for the Courier to deliver his Orchid, and then he wanted to TP and actually fight for the top tier one, but they had already used the Glyph. Fear put a really good call down down, just zoning CDC out and 
uh, securing the tower. And when Aggressive saw that he was porting on the tier 2 and he couldn't reach, he just chose the greedy option, which was to not port in, because, well, we're not catching them anyway, I'll stay bottom. And then EG go for the gank. If that hook shot lands, I think he's toast. So very important for Aggressive to not get caught out. Would have been really important for EG to take it as well, because he next about to fight even more. Uh, Q has finished a full mech in under 20 minutes over on this Visage. So Evil Genius has have to be prepared for Sidek to group up and try and force the issue against EG. No need to wait. Sidek will be looking for these early fights. This seems to be Q's build on Visage. He did this in game one against EG as well of the winner's bracket when they picked Visage. Uh, most Visage players these days just go brown boots into uh, the solo crest and maybe an, an axe somewhere down the road. Uh, but in CDC's drafts, they don't really have any other mech carrier and he he makes very good use of it. Of course, Visage is an innately very tanky hero once you get points up in Gravekeeper's Cloak. So you're very likely to be able to get the mech off. Samael, got to get himself away from this. He just broke the five-man smoke that was there from C-Deck. Observable is watching Universe pretty closely, but as PPD is the man who's in trouble until Universe hook shots himself in, going after Garda, but PPD already down for the count, dying to the track while Universe, the shards will block him in. Now Snowball Art from Familiars are coming in. They do have their stuns available. Might need a little bit more damage as now. There's Samael, can't get the shackle. He was close, They just went for the ulti over on the Tusker. Because now EG trying to back out of this one. Samael, as well as AUI, the only ones alive. And now he's going to get orchided, stomped up. That's a very, very dead Samael. But the curse, he actually holds Queen of Pain back with a blink hand. Only stalled up. Not control completely. And EG losing four heroes very, very quickly for the price of a Tuscar. Not to mention, now Broodmother with a tier one tower down on top lane. There's a lot more map control coming the way of C deck. It's very difficult for EG to take fights when they get assaulted on two or three fronts at the same time. We had like two split fights going on. There was the Brood and the Queen of Pain going for the Gyro first. And at the same time, they get an initiation at the bottom side with the Tusk here. And EG's lineup is just, it's built to take these really strong five on fights, uh, five on five fights, but these two on threes or three on twos or whatever right now, three They're on gonna threes. They're going to come out. Universe, hook shot, he misses oh. it. He'll still get in range of the battery assault, turning on the blade mail as well. The Shrek does not want to try and fight this one, but he has no choice. Denial with the bloodstone. Versace was still able to get that last hit in the tier two tower underneath the noses of EG. He's going to resummon this familiar here. This is a big cooldown forced by, by EG. This is a three minute cooldown on level one on the familiars for the visage and perhaps eg can do something with this but they lost so much they lost multiple heroes they lost a tier two mid they lost a third of their top tier two and they have so many problems to solve first i'm sure they would love to go for these aggressive plays but they feel like they constantly have somewhere they need to take care of they have to defend the top lane now again lashrak is pushing out mid it's very hard to gather up get a smoke and get into the enemy jungle and be aggressive when you constantly just have to struggle to control just your own side of the map. Even half of your own side of the map. Maybe it's that time then where EG should just look to just find their timing for farm. I know they really want to be taking out this ancient stack. There's like a quad stack of ancients there. But EG, oh, the familiars, they're scouting out the fact, like they're looking over towards the stack right now. So we'll see the quad stack and we'll see fear farming it up. But EG, they prepare the bait by putting Aoi as well as Somalian. Actually, no, that is uh, not the real Ashrak. All the... Okay, yeah, this is this is not going right for EG. They're losing a tier two. Yep. They're, this is so much time being wasted by one illusion and a couple of familiars, while then C-Deck, they know they could just force an issue. You get a Tessellator Broodmother. Still gonna fly out, but... If they get the Roche, this is a pretty good trade for EG, actually, considering this t this tier two, there was no way they were gonna hold it. They're gonna get the Ancients afterwards, perhaps, and... See, they don't see it, though. They are not expecting this play to come out, and it's gonna be successful. It's like they're waiting for EG to come out and try and wrap around into the dire jungle. Now the ping comes in from Natalskar, but EG have already gotten away with murder of Roshan. That's a very confident play as well. If EG get caught there while they're rushing, they, the game's almost over. Like, they were already pretty far behind on gold and experience in this game. So going for a desperation play like that is definitely the right call in the situation here from PPD. And getting the Ancients too is going to bring fear. It's actually going to get him his BKB. It's pretty much just enough. If he can get all three, it will be, yeah. So... There we go. C-Deck don't contest Roshan. They do scout out the Ancient stack, but are incapable of stopping it or unwilling to stop it. And then you can have Samel finding more and more money over on this Wind Ranger. So, 
she's able to combine up something else with the Aghanim, so for some level of damage dealing item. Even AUI was able to fall up a full Glimmer Cape on this Winter Wyvern. So there's more and more ways appearing for EG where they can fight C Deck if C Deck try and force the issue. And maybe that's another reason why they're not until they're in a nice, comfortable zone. That's I think the T1 Tower. PBD taking a very long time to TP out. Fear's going to join it as well. But yep, all of C Deck. They head down bottom, including the Broodmother. Another one of those classic CDC rotations where they just go immediately all heroes to one place. And EG read it this time around, they don't get caught. Question is if they can hold their tier 2. They do have the Aegis, of course, on Sameo, who will most likely be acting as an aggressive kind of bait here, as I, I think EG wants to try and fight this. But they do have call down on cooldown for another 10, as Fear used it as a defensive measure, and actually they will be too late. It has gone no cliff. They also haven't got a smoke, I think, so no real... I'm not feeling confident initiating into that. And, they and will rightly so. Right, there's two Observer Wars just watching their movement around. So Cedek knew exactly what they could get away with there, and EG had no way to just slip under the radar. As we now get a Blink Dagger is the next item up for Samal. I was wondering if he's actually going to go for damage, or if it all just turned into, you know what, we need Samal for initiation. Even though the clockwork is fantastic, getting that double shackle shot is just so critical for EG during fights. This build is, in my opinion, the best in most cases. If you're playing a core Windranger mid, it's just, it allows you to find solo pickoffs, it allows you to engage and disengage. You can go in with the blink where in the... In a lot of situations, you would maybe have to wind run to catch up first for the shackle. And then what's your defensive, what's your, what's your getaway item? You don't really have anything, so... Uh, this catches enemies by surprise. It gives you single pickoff potential. It lands, allows you to land these two-man shackles. And all in all, just makes you way, way more powerful for the price of 2250. But for now... He's, he's powerful, but nowhere to really use it as C-Deck. They're backing out, so it's, uh, it's Latrak farming up on top. Trying to wait another 13 seconds so that Bloodstone comes back up. Cool down, and there's your Blink to Shackle. Latrak, well, no denial for you. Brought down with a double damage Wind Ranger. And she actually used both the Wind Run and the Blink. She was really far away, but saw the opening. Now they, they could push for a Tier 2 Tower. Like you still got the double damage rune, and in fact, yep, there goes your wind run. They can try and burn through the tower while the bottom lane. You got the push coming in, and in fact, the hook shot down from Universe, catching an XZ, reveals him off with the dust. AUI still is the curse, so Broodmother's not going to go anywhere, and with a cooldown as well, EG will find the kill. Meanwhile, on top, Samel orchid up and in real trouble, but the Aegis the Immortal PPD waiting in the wings, but what really can he do apart from watch him die? Is there a blink and wait? And yes! Samael gets away, aggressive, shackled up, he's going for more PPD, he can't let Ashley live any more health, Samael will die, the blink forward, PPD will be able to escape. But almost a miraculous escape from the Wind Ranger. Nice attempt there from Samael, but ultimately again, in a way, it, it, this was another fight where CDC are determining the tempo of the game, right? It's EG go for an aggressive play, they find the pick off on Lesh with the Wind Ranger, they start being aggressive, the moment there's any sort of rotation needed to deal with the Brute Bottom, CDC immediately gather atop with the remaining four heroes, and they just run down whatever EG didn't TP away from up there. So EG are kind of forced into a position where they either have to full back with all their heroes there, or they have to go for a trade. And I don't think that trade really favored them. They lost Aegis and a hero only to kill the Brute. And they did, but at the same time, they, they need something, because every time they don't do it, C-Deck Holes in advantage, they're coming down now. A smoke movement with the hook shot. They catch out the Broodmother once again. Again, that Blade Mail as well, not helping out the Broodmother. More TP supports coming in from c -Deck, and the cooldown already used from Fear. The Familiars flying right over the top, not getting the stuns. But aggressive, a blink in two seconds. He'll be chasing up after Universe. Cogs might better keep them out for now. And in fact, both Familiars don't stun anything. And uh, hey, UI, where's the shackle? BKB from aggressive. He'll dodge it, and Universe dying so quickly with a power shot for Fear on the front lines of the rocket. Barrage with the help from Samel, they find the kill. The gem's also over on the deck, and they'll try and hold him here. Aggressive, Frostbit and PPD. We're going in right now. The freezing field drops, but he will be stunned up with control. But Shiki, no, he'll have to deny himself. They're not having a great fight here. See the EG again in the upper hand. They're chasing up after Garda. He'll drop as well. Queen of Pain able to escape, running away with that gem of truth side of C deck. So and it's a 4 1 trade off. 
This is what EG are able to accomplish with their BKB on Gyro with the 10 second charge and the fact that they finally got a fight that was on one front. They got the opener on the Brood. No immediate counterplay from CDC makes the fight five on four. And when they tried to go in for a counterplay, it's some oh nice tonight here by Q. It's Samail they have to try to catch because he is outputting so much damage. But Fear takes all the attention in the fight with all the damage he is outputting. Of course, PPD there with a very good freezing field as well. And the winner's curse. They got everything off the way they wanted there. EG and honestly, for EG, it's probably the dream scenario. The universe finds a kill on the brood, and then that CDC dropped everything on him because he already used his hook shot and his blade mill. After that, he's not that valuable of a kill compared to a hero like the Gyrocopter or the Windrage. The Windrage is going to become more valuable shortly. We're looking at a Desolator build coming in from Samael. So he's walking around with a Deso recipe. Didn't actually buy the Mithril Hammer. So probably one of those buys where he's not 100% certain that he will, will be able to survive the fight. Dyer's top tower is under and this is going to help him greatly going up against that Broodmother, who's already walking around with 22 armor. And they're establishing control again inside the Dire Jungle. PPD is trying to farm just on the edge of town. And I'm surprised with, uh, with how CDC are playing this game that the Brood is not going for a BKB. I think it would actually be a really good item this game. You can pretty much ignore most of the clockwork. You can ignore the Crystal Maiden. Lots of Gyro's damage is still magical. So the only hi uh, hero who's really a threat is the Wind Ranger and her physical damage. But you could probably just disengage and find a different initiation angle or a different target. That is disengaged now. Like that, they're, they're trying to force out the top lane. In fact, EG, oh, they don't have any vision behind the tower, so they're not that certain about it. With the double damage rate in the hands of Wind Ranger, they could at least force the fortification out from C deck. And that will allow her to slip into the, into the mid lane at one point and take out that tier one, two. Samael's gonna run. He's gonna be fine. He has a good uh, defensive ward down around the river area. CDC once again find nothing, they group up for it. But they do have decent lane positions. The bottom lane, C e EG didn't manage to push as much as they would have liked, I think. Uh, AY did whatever he could there with the cold embrace, but obviously couldn't get in too close with the risk of getting caught out. There's a lot of spiders are being cleaned up here. So much money for EG. And oh, this is the objective. This they is are, where the fight's going to be. They're going to be really happy with the spawn timing of this. It's 10 seconds away from spawn, so it's a quick Roshan. And the reason why it's even better is Samel still is holding on to this double damage rune. So he's got this during the next fight. In fact, EG, they're moving forward at the moment. The hook shot in from Universe. He's caught two inside the cogs and falls on himself back out again. The shots, though, is a real lock in position. Universe, he just gets exploded. But at the same time, Samel trying to bring down Garda. There's a little bit of help. PPD, the freezing field's not doing enough work. In fact, he's dying to familiars, and he will, in fact, go down. They're going in deeper, but Samael locked in and controlled EG. They're gonna lose four. Fear trying to change it around as much as he can, but now they're gonna lose five. EG went in too deep. AUI blinking himself away to safety, but not far enough. He'll glimmer cape into the pit, but they lose everything. Aggressive with a triple kill. C deck will also grab Roshan and cement their control of this game. It was starting to swing away from them. It was a 5k advantage in net worth going the way of C deck. But look at the curve when we go to the experience. It kicks straight back up again for, for C deck. EG, they are in real trouble now. Samael just doesn't have enough damage just yet. It's 33 minutes in. He's not having his best game on that Wind Ranger compared to what we saw earlier on in the tournament. If he would have had the Deso, this fight would have been completely different. But. They don't kill fast enough with the Focus Fire. I think they also layer their abilities a little bit too much. There was a little bit of stun layering there. The Shackle Shot was not expired when the Winter's Curse from AUI came in. And it also looked like they weren't focusing on the same target entirely. So they spread it like they did a lot of damage to two targets instead of killing one off. And then the Snowball from Garter saves the Lishrak after his self fuels, And they just get to dodge the Freezing Field and find all the kills at the end. Beautiful play from Cedek, not losing a single player there. That it looked like it was going to be a great fight for EG, but they just lacked that little bit extra that could have turned it their way. You're right. It also comes down to a huge snowball coming in from Garda. He was able to protect two of the Cedek players throughout the fight. So the layering from Cedek was perfect. But for now, Cedek back to that farming kind of game, unless they can find an opening. The Observer was watching all of EG moving into their own jungle. Next wave of items is starting to arrive, so a full BKB Lashrak is now up and running. You've still got that Blink Dagger over on the Tusker. And we've got two Plate Mails, one for the Co-op and one for the Broodmother. 
So I'll be looking at both Shivas and Assault Curas being built up here for C deck. And in fact, the Assault Curas is already done. And that's over on aggressive. He is 7 0 9. Super farmed this game, 235 CS. He's third highest. CDC have got full map control now. That one fight just gave them the entire map on a platter. And they even have a gem. So the final parts of EG's defensive lines outside of their base is now gone. And with Shiki with this BKB and the Aegis, the next fight EG take, they, they don't kill Shiki during BKB with anything else than a Focus Fire Wind Ranger. But her Deso is still not ready, so I'm not even sure that's gonna cut it. And then they still have the problem of dealing with the second life. This next fight, CDC are going into with a very, very high odds of winning unless EG get a miracle combo off. And they even have to babysit Smail as he tries to complete up this Deso later. Wind Ranger, not the healthiest of heroes as far as life goes. Now it's even harder for him. It's just... It's a good you, you, have, you have to venture so deep into, into the Radiant Jungle for this farm. Fear just upped his damage quite a bit with this uh, Butterfly. And of course his defense as well. 35% evasion. There's no MKB on the Radiant. It's a really good item against Visage. Um, the Broodmother will also lose quite a bit of damage. But judging from how the fights have gone so far, CDC haven't really targeted Fear super early in the fights. I think he died last in that last fight. They just went for the easy targets first, and then they took out some L. And then on to Fear in the end. If they can tank the Gyro's damage, with this Kiras giving them all five armor, with the Brute giving them all five armor with Vlads, they have 10 AoE armor. The Lesh looks pretty fragile in isolation right now, but he technically has 18 armor during team fights. EG, they don't have enough oomph right now. They have to just wait, try to wait out the Aegis, get the Deso on some L and then go for the fight of their lives to come back into this game. And CDC can just keep map controlling. They're doing the right thing. They're farming the enemy jungle. Uh, they're pushing out both top and mid lane. EG are taking the only lane that's kind of safe for them here in the bottom. And, and they're not even showing a carry down here. It's PPD who's split pushing. They might be concerned with losing a, a more key hero at this point. Well, right now, they're looking for that key hero. They've smoked up with four players as well as a couple of familiars. Shiki is the only one showing himself in the mid lane. In fact, yes, they are going to wrap around the bottom. But as you said, it's, it's AUI and PPD. It's the two supports who are down here. So Mel's just trying to farm the jungle. He's 50 gold away from having that Desolator. And right now, he's going to walk almost into EG. The blink into the tree line, and as well as TP out, Samel, he does it in time. And AUI looks like he'll also be successful. So unsuccessful smoke gank from C-Deck, and a lot of time wasted for them. And they lose a the tower. They will deny it, though. So not the biggest loss, but... EG doing a good job reading map movements with uh, zero vision. If you look at the tire vision, they see absolutely nothing right now. And on the, quite the contrary, CDEC, they have four Observer Wards out. When these, when these familiars are done, well, then again, hook shot. Universe, he's found the broom on the BKB to be done, and Universe just four stars himself away, and Shiki, he's moved up even further, looking for Samal. Samal gonna get perfectly stunned, and brought down by the pulse over. Fear with the call down, he might have enough damage, no, he does not! EG lose three, this is spiraling completely out of control for Evil Geniuses, and perfectly in the position for C-Deck. AUI locked on the other side of the trees, he's dead to the world. The only one left up is Universe. But this is the time when CDEC could just push and try and take a Rax. Shiki already TP'd himself up to the top lane. They're looking for more than just one. I think Universe in that situation didn't realize XC picked up the BKB. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's the right choice to go for it and did it after the plate mill. The moment that BKB was popped, the EG were in a lot of trouble. They didn't have the counterplay to the Brood. They just put their Clockwork into a horrible position. And it looks very likely right now that the series will be tied up. Jump in by aggressive at the same time they're gonna snowball after AUI. He's down for the count. Universe having this one-on-one -on -one battle with a Broodmother. A battle which he will lose a four staff away. He had to bail out of this one. Live to fight another day. He has already expended his call down to try and stop this push on the top lane but he'll have to come in with flat cannon as well. PPD. Well, that grief's already been triggered by C-Deck. They're happy to find this in Universe so low when he jumps in the blade mount, not protecting him almost a 50 life, but Samael's the main man who's in trouble. They've lost everything. EG, good game. We will have a guaranteed fourth game as C-Deck level the series 1-1. One, one. That rip by the last pick really caught them off guard. I think both teams played a really, really good game here. Um, 
actually expected EG to lose harder than they did. I think the Brute, Brute could have just completely ruined their game, but mm -hmm. they did. Uh, they did what they could defensively. Now, this is something that sometimes happens. You know, in, in like a best of three or a best of five, you get caught off guard by a hero you used to be able just be 